Chris, go ahead. See, we talked a little bit about this Saturday night, but do you feel like after the last month, the last six games, things are finally in the right direction? I think uh, after thinking about it a lot, Kevin, I think the difference between the last six games or, or month uh, and the first half is we're getting results. Um, I think we're worrying less about results, but we're, we're getting uh, some level of results, which means uh, they actually feel good about what they're doing and there's some positive reinforcement for what they're doing. I said it earlier, I said it in the first half, I thought we were making progress even though the results said we weren't. Uh, I'm not saying you're, you're questioning that, I'm just saying that's the main difference. Uh, there was days in the first half where we were really good in practice, there was games we played very well, we just didn't get any results. By the end of the first half, we really were, were, were thinking too much, quite frankly. Um, so. It's nice to be able to get rewarded for hard work when you're 20 years old and you're a hockey player, and that's what's been happening. That's it. It's no different. We're work in progress. We're 11% on the power play. We don't score enough goals. Like there's still lots to do, and uh, uh, and we're working on those things. But I think that's that's what's different now than two and a half, three months ago. How was it affecting you? Were you sleeping a little bit better? Yeah. Is it, is it... Well, honestly, I mean, you know, I appreciate the question. I, I, um, Christmas time was a good time for me, uh, the holidays. You know, I, I, and I've said this earlier this week, the reason I, I, Barry and Ty were the first two guys that I thought of when this job opened up and, and I got the job um, uh, was because they know me as a person, uh, you know, they know me as a hockey coach somewhat, but they know me as a person when they started to see me go sideways a little bit during the first half, they came and said, wait a second here, uh, let's not change who we are or our approach. So uh, I think I hopefully had righted the ship a little bit internally and personally before now. Um, I, I believe in the big picture. I believe in the daily process and I believe in the results will take care of themselves. Uh, and I, I got away from that, quite, quite honestly. I'm not sure if my message to the players got away from that. Some of my body language around here and, and my reaction to things around here, I, I think, got away from that. So I think we had turned the corner. I had turned the corner before now. I, I'm happy not for me. I'm happy for the players. They're, they, they work so hard, and they deserve more feedback positively. And uh, I'm, I'm happy they're getting it. Why has Sammy been so good the last seven years? Uh, you know, I, I don't know, Kevin. You'd have to ask him that, mm -hmm. what the difference is. Yeah. I know he's, he's done a lot of reflecting. Mm -hmm. He's talked to people. Um, he's talked to, 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 to guys that I think uh, are, are good in the, in the mind game of the, of, of, uh, of the approach, if you will. Because um, uh, I, I don't see him working extra hard. I, I see him really focused in practice. Uh, maybe I didn't watch him enough the first half. Maybe he's working harder. Uh, I don't know. I just I know that uh, his daily approach is pretty consistent, and Friday night's just another another day for him. He he uh, he expects to be good. You know, we pulled him the first game against Bemidji, but out of his own mouth, he felt good about where he was. He felt good about his game that night. It was just one of those nights. He answered back Saturday. You know, it wasn't good enough for us a two-one loss, but. He was back on top of his game, and I think the results since then have been really good. Uh, I, I don't know uh, any anything other than that. You know, maybe he's, he's taking it up a half a notch every day, but that's something he'd have to answer. I, I see him being uh, taking a very professional approach on, on a daily basis, and the results are showing it. But I thought in the first half, um, for the most part, he was doing okay in practice, and then he really struggled in games at times. Uh, but. You know, he's, he's starting to get the results and the consistency that he was looking for. When you look at the offense, they haven't had a lot of shots the last, I think the last couple of weekends. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you do to get that going? Well, you just continue to harp on it mm -hmm. because we're, we're playing another decor here that's uh, not necessarily veteran by age, but they're veteran by experience and what they've been through with Frozen Four last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are guys that, you know, they've got world junior experience and Stephen Johns and, and just, you know, Calabrese has been there for a while and, uh, you know, Russo was on a world under 18 stage. Like these are guys that in hockey terms are pretty experienced players. Um, 
Alaska is really difficult to put a lot of shots on goal because it's so spread out up there. And then, and then Western Michigan may have one of the better decors in our league. That's that's not an excuse. Right. It's, it's just <laughs> uh, we need to put more pucks on that, Kevin. Yeah. We do. Um, we need to keep. Uh, 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 paying attention to our details in our game, whether it be how we cross the offensive blue line, how we dump pucks, where we place pucks, uh, those kind of stick battles in the offensive zone, all those things are leading to not enough shots consistently. And then, you know, when your power play is at 11.1%, that's, that's obviously not very good. So it's a combination of things. It's not one thing. Uh, we need more pucks. But if we continue to defend the way we're defending, we don't need to score three or four goals a game. I want to, believe me, and so do they. But it, it, it's, it's it, you know, you talk about a work in progress. Well, <laughs> that's what our yeah. offense is. You look at the, the last number of games, you've gotten a lot of greasy goals. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, yeah. uh, that's where we are. So I'll, I'll take greasy goals. Yeah. I, I think we have guys that are capable of scoring pretty goals, yeah. uh, but they're guys that, uh, you know, that they can score a greasy goal too. I mean, I, I think Cameron Tala is, is a prime example. He scored a nice greasy goal to, to tie the game against Ohio State on the Sunday. And then he scored a nice greasy goal here to tie the game on, on Saturday night. Uh, he got rewarded for those things. You know, uh, you, the McIntosh goal on Saturday, it all started with offensive zone play that it was a nothing play that ended up in the net. I mean, that was pretty greasy, you know? So we're, we're we want to take pride in that, but we also, give our guys the ability to make plays, whether it's off the rush or whatever. Um, I'd like to see a couple pretty ones, yeah. but uh, I'll take greasy yeah. ones too. Uh, any differences in uh, preparing for Notre Dame this time? You know, I haven't already played them, or just going about the same? Uh, pretty much the same. I mean, there, there's some things that Notre Dame does that it doesn't matter how much you're prepared for. They just they just do it. I, I, I don't really look at the standings. I. I I think they're a couple points out of first place, even though they're sitting in fifth or sixth or something like that. Um, maybe four points out of first. I still feel in a seven-game series, Notre Dame might be one of the better teams in the country, uh, just because. I, I, obviously, they've got some pretty good players up front, and their decor is good. And, and I think their goaltending is fine. I know people question it sometimes, but I think it's fine. Um, so, uh, you know. We, we, we have to continue to focus on executing and competing at the same time. The Friday night Western Michigan game, we've talked about it, was 0-0 with nine minutes to go in the second period. And five minutes sent us 3 nothing. We cannot do that again. We cannot get down to a team like this in their building uh, because of plays that we give them. Uh, and that, that is the constant message in practice. And that's not going to change no matter who our opponent is. Is Marcus is he okay? Marcus is good. Yeah, he's practiced the last couple of days. I think he's done some precautionary therapy, but he's fine. And has Wyatt been cleared for full practice yet? Uh, no, no. He, he, you know, we've been told that his body will tell him uh, how quickly or whatever he can get back to full practice. So he's just taking bit by bit, and uh, you know, he gets sore, so he takes him a day or whatever, and then and then he comes back and takes. Bus. So he's he's just. You know, kind of progressing nicely. Anybody else injury wise? No. Why is Dan DeSalvo played so well this year? What do you like about his? Well, I think first and foremost, Kevin, he's got a pretty good opportunity. You know, he, he is somebody that we added late last year, and I think uh, there was a differing opinion out there that he probably needed another year of junior. That's one of those opinions that, that depends on the opportunity that you're walking into. If you're walking into an opportunity where you're in and out of the lineup, maybe you should go back to junior. If you're walking into an opportunity that you're going to be able to play in the situations you would have played in in junior, uh, then you you know you, you come into that situation and you and you see what you can do with it. Um, so I think his opportunity was good. I I just think Dan DeSalvo, the way we describe, him, he's a hockey player. You know he he's not the biggest guy, he's not the strongest guy, but he's he's hockey strong. He he's got a good base. He's he's a pretty strong guy on pucks, and I I think he's just got he sees things that other guys don't see. His skills are good. Um, we think. And Dan thinks there's another level of his game. You know, he, he, he can, his pace is good. He hasn't shown that consistently. We think there's more pace to his game. Uh, you know, he's a guy that we think can be a really special power play player at some point. That hasn't happened yet, uh, but it's developing. You know, it, it's coming. Um, 
And then I, I like those three guys together with, with, with Carp and Burkle. They seem to have a little something going, so that's nice. Um, but uh, it's not a surprise. We knew the opportunity was going to be good. And we knew he's probably, you know, uh, a year early in, in hockey terms. Uh, but uh, he, he hasn't been a surprise to us. And, and he's one of those kids that we've, we've talked to him a lot lately, especially. And, and he's one of those kids that wants to be told, tell me what I'm doing wrong and expect better. Because I expect better for myself, but I need to know. So uh, he's been really receptive to any type of uh, teaching, if you will. You've several times this year. You you said that um, Dan's a hockey player. What do you what do you what does that mean? I just I just think he makes hockey plays. Mm -hmm. Nothing is what Dan does. You can't teach Dan to do. He he just does it because that's what he's always done. I think everyone has physical attributes that you can make better or or uh, or improve. You know, through strength or through practice or whatever. A lot of what Dan Salvo was good at, he's just good at because either it's God given ability. Uh, again, he sees plays. You can't get into a player's head and see. I, I'd probably say, like a quarterback, you, you know, they, they've got they've got the new camera there where the coach is talking in here to tell you who's open. Uh, that's getting a little robotic for me, but uh, you know, I think Dan's uh, uh, his one of his biggest attributes is just the things he sees out there and the plays he's able to make. He's kind of slippery uh, down below the tops of the circles, and again, he's strong enough. And his leverage is good. Where he's not going to get knocked off pucks, even though he's not as tall as maybe the defender he's going against. But uh, he makes hockey plays. He puts pucks into areas. He makes little plays that are subtle that end up in, in opportunities or a good defensive play. And and, and uh, I also think he's willing. You know, he, he's he's a gutsy guy for for you know five ten or five nine or whatever he is. He goes to hard areas. He's not afraid to get his nose dirty. And that, when you put him in those situations with the hockey player in him and the ability to make little hockey plays, uh, you know, he's a pretty good player. Where did he play two years ago? Two years ago, he played for Team Illinois. So that would have been a midget team? Yeah, major midget. Okay. And then Thanks. he was in Des Moines for a year, and yeah. obviously uh, Des Moines wanted him back. He really started to come on the second half of last year, and we had Nick DeSalvo here, Dan's older brother, yeah. who was a senior you know, student helper with us. So we were getting pretty consistent updates on Dan, and we had seen him, and he just, you know, was always there. Just kept, man, DeSalvo was good again tonight, again tonight. And uh, once we met the kid, you know, we, we obviously, we, uh, we really liked him, and, and he seemed to like us, so it was, it was a good fit. Yeah. So he's made a pretty good jump, considering he's yeah. two years out of that. Yeah. You're, when you're two years removed from major midget hockey, that's where the concern comes. Um, are you, but, but, you know, school wise, he was one year post grad. He wasn't a, a true freshman. And that's where other sports are like, what, what are you talking about? What, what do you mean he's not ready? And, and that's not necessarily fair. Again, that, that being not ready is, it's, it, it's a, it's an opinion. And we knew our opportunity, like I said, was a really good one. We, we need, we needed offense and it hasn't even come out yet to what it's going to be. And, you know, as he, as he progresses and gets older with his classmates and, and we hope with some of those sophomores, we're going to hopefully have a couple of different groups of people to go to, 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 to rely on scoring goals and not just one or two guys. Okay. Thanks. 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 Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.